Yeah. There's too much light. My blessed mess forsaken. These fairy tales are lost. Queens and dungeons fly a lifeless dream. How to come bleak, how craft and dark to make a grin. That's my hallmark. My guts fill up with pretty tales. Their prissy cuteness never fails to make me puke. To lose my wits, to cut my teeth and give me fits. Now the rents is stale and foul. Despise the happy ending. Gross and nasty make me howl, though they may be offending. I hear the things and tales of night, fear and woe break at the night. I aim to look a door up tuck. My humble goal is to Ever ready to exploit tales of the capricious missteps in nature's grand journey? The brothers eschew their usual dwarves or gnomes to set their lesson, and settle instead on a hero smaller than an infant platypus. Thumbling, no bigger than an elephant turd, plays at being a courageous mite. Father, I must leave the shop and find something useful to do with my life. It's a wicked world, my son. But go if you must. Don't try to talk me out of it. Not if my life depended on it. Perhaps the novelty of protecting his child from the claws of the family cat is worn thin. Did you break wind? Whoa! Bye, father! There goes Dumbling, seeking his fortune, whether he wants to or not. Out on his own, his principal challenge is to avoid being squashed. He tries several crafts to make a living. Doesn't make much. Currently, he's teaching horses to haul. Here, yeah, no, Nelly, no, not that way. This nag couldn't find its hind quarters. I'll put a bug in her ear, so to speak. Not very inventive, but effective nonetheless. Now giddy up the right way, or I'll take you to the glue factory. Giddy up, I say. I hear a cart driver, but I don't see him. Is it a spirit? No, you don't. The driver's standing in a horse's ear. Now that's passing strange. Mark, little fella, come join our circus. We'll treat you well, and you'll make a load of money. Oh boy, a circus! What would I have to do to earn it? Just be you. Sounds easy. With more experience of the world, Thumbling might have seen through this offer, but there'd be even less of a story to tell. This perhaps was not the circus Thumbling had in mind. There's so little honesty in the world, but the fleas promise not to bite. It's all fine for you lot. You're more athletic than me. I know. How about we put on a show? I'll be Hamlet then. No offense, Dumbling. I prefer my Princess of Denmark a bit larger. And juicier too. Okay. But I call first on the wheel next time. Sure, fine. No problem. You'll break it, you clumsy git. One's perception of job satisfaction can alter so very quickly. Having escaped the dubious pleasures of the circus, Tiny Thumbling becomes a quarry to a domestic beast. Blasted feline! Dumb as the proverbial post. Can't tell a human from a mouse. Do I have a tail, I ask you? Do I have whiskers? You'd prefer she make a snack of one of us? Be grateful you found shelter in our home. Together we could turn you out. Try your arguments on her. My apologies. I don't think she would listen to reason. 
He leaves eventually, of course. Even a tiny person can only stand so much proximity to mouse feces. Still, his escape is bound to be an out of the frying pan into the fire situation. I want out of here. Smells terrible, and I'm moving toward the intestines. This cow is bewitched. I'll carve her into pieces and make a black pudding from her innards. The butchers are dealt, but with luck, I'll just relax a bit and make my escape in the pudding. Luck's about all he's got. Despite being poked, prodded, stabbed and smoked, Thumbling makes his escape a little worse for wear and returns home not much wiser, no more fortunate. Oh, joy. Well, it's rather pointless, isn't it? Young lad leaves home to seek his fortune, has adventures of a sort, but fails totally. Had he been full-sized, he would have failed in other ways. Perhaps more interesting ones. Let's see if we can make better sense of this mess. When Thumbling threatens to leave his family, it's fair to wonder why. His life here seems so cozy and safe. A pint-sized person would need a very good reason to run away from such comfort. I believe I can help. Make it gross. Get it on! You see, Thumbling's at best bored, and the needle's nearly an instrument of torture. He can't master cross-stitching, he's a bit of a dreamer, and perhaps not so well loved as his full-sized brother. He wants out! Still, his painter doesn't think he's ready for life on his own. Smarter than he looks, his dad. So Thumbling plots his own escape. Doesn't seem to be in much of a hurry, though. Well, if he wants to go, it's like a fire under his ass. Make it rotten.
stomping good! Tumbling's trying to display his horsemanship. <laughs> but the nag panther won't hear a thing from this end. There's an obvious path. It's gold, but it's certainly the road less traveled. Make it loose. Let's kill the clean. Directing the old horse where she needs to go. I don't think the message is getting through. Maybe some wax in the ears. Let's shake things up! Make it... nasty.
Saint in a brothel, and about as useful. Stop it! Not by water, ignominious defeat! Having been shanghaied into service at the flea circus, Thumbling tries to fit in. <laughs> the audience seems a little bored to me. Roll up! Come close, my friends, for the greatest show on earth! A greatest tiny show! A tiniest great show! Uh, indeed. I don't think these acts are death-defying enough. Let's make it really daring. Make it stinky. Charge!
sell seats and keeps the crowd hungry for more. A story as old as time. Well, this is another fine mess. <laughs> Time to show them what lurks in the truly dark corners. Make it nasty. Grim does dirt. This is ridiculous! Drop it! 
and stupid, but kicking good. <laughs> Fortuitous hole provides temporary succor among the mice. Lucky Thumbling. Place looks comfortable. Gadara's host, happy at his arrival. Even Thumbling seems a little bored. So am I. Let's stir up a little chaos. Make it repulsive. Now a butcher, baker and candlestick maker can't be far behind. I don't see much evidence of the dirty work. Let's get the blood flowing. Make it repulsive. Make a mess. Grim's rot. Ow. Now 
I'm disgusted. to pieces and make a black pudding from her innard. Make it putrid. Incompetent! 
shivering blockhead! <laughs> Listen to the poor sign among you. Come here, brilliant. And you try to hide. Seems the butcher supplies are nearby town. Guess those piggies are for the chop. Let's make bacon! Make it nasty. Let's meet the enemy head on. Charge! Thank <laughs> you. 
Viking village? Well, who am I to question fate? They look a little too cheery. I prefer my Vikings with a little more Ragnarok. Make it putrid. Stop it, 
stump. Thumbling set out to see the world. Then he never thought he'd see it end. Ragnarok! Cut us from better than that! Young boys leave home for many reasons. Adventure, money, or love blech, are strong motivators. But just as often, disgust and anger open the door and provide a swift boot in the butt. Slave labor allows this savage shop to make a profit. Father, our trade is dangerous and mean. Please change your ways. This violates the laws of God and man. There's no money in such laws. I'll make my own. You puny bleeding arm. Father, you nearly crushed me. I was trying to squash a fly. Oh, Father, no. Stay still, Thumbling. You're frightening the fly. Ew. What eats like a horse poops like one? Damn nature. This'll be a challenge. I have some gaseous distress in the lower track. If I could only fart. Control yourself. I've been shat on. I'd rather not be shat out. Well, size does matter, apparently. Thumbling works, if I may use a dreadful concept, his way toward the recalcitrant quadruped's ear. This intestinal odyssey was really his only way forward. Hard to imagine a more disgusting journey. I love it. Ew, again. Talk about your waxy yellow build-up. Stop! Or you'll be on the next boat to France! The amusement of performance has worn to a grisly nub. The cage is less gay. Misery is palpable. Revolt is imminent. Ah, my pretties, higher. That's good, Bruce. Use your brother as a springboard. There's blood in it. So much for honor among the viciously exploited. I've got to get out of here. Died not appreciated and abused in a defunct flea circus, not what you had in mind for your epitaph. Get in line. Thumbling, if not slightly smarter than the fleas, is a bit stronger. He makes his escape at their expense. Our boy eludes his oppressors, but is quickly forced to seek shelter from a ravenous marauding feline. You have numbers on your side. With a coordinated plan, you could defeat your enemy. We are not Lilliputians. We are not heroes. Are we not mice? Our duty is to die. Following token and totally ineffectual resistance. I'm out now, little mouses. I'm a bit pecky. Let's meet the enemy head on. We'll scratch out his eyes. By which thumbling meant I'll escape while the cat scrape your body parts from his teeth. Oh yeah, our thumb-sucking searcher winds up in a butcher shop gone rogue. Out of the feline frying pan, into the slaughterhouse sausage. 
Thumbling has something more than bad karma, but his luck holds, I guess. He lives, though only to be abused. Mercy, you brute! You nearly separated my fingers from my hand! When a man is happy in his work, the loss of a couple of digits is a trivial price to pay. And if someone is unhappy in his work? He ends up like this pig. Never a dull moment. Another escape is required. No wonder the whole Viking town is ill or dead. They got tired of the hell of it only diet and gave themselves over to the butcher's diseased bear. Thumbling became a vegetarian. This is what life is really like. Not much different than being home with Dad. Except for the Vikings and the epidemic of Tomain poisoning. No neat resolution, no happy ending. All you can say is the little guy's still alive and looking for trouble. He's bound to find it. May all our stories end so well. Until next time.